I clearly have an affection for it, being an alum here, and feeling in some way that there's karma involved with me being back here, trying to, hoping to affect students' lives in the same way mine was affected and landed me at the place where I could never have imagined ending up, you know, kind of a dream job. Wouldn't it be funny if someday I could end up teaching at Smith and, and here I am. She was one of my early students. She took a, a seminar from me and got involved in a research project having to do with perfectionism. No one had really thought through what makes up this, this kind of characteristic in a person and what questions would you ask someone to tell if they were perfectionistic. Researchers have begun to develop a consensus around the actual definition of perfectionism. One is the, what is often termed positive achievement striving. The other part of it, however, and the part that's more concerning psychologically in terms of liability and cost, the focus is not so much on doing one's best, but the focus is on never making a mistake. Let's imagine that I come up with a new and novel treatment that I think will help kids become less perfectionistic over time. And What's really know, interesting in thinking about this, both in terms of kind of my own personal development, the way that I think about mentoring students, is trying to kind of maintain that positive achievement striving because it does seem to be correlated in many instances with lots of positive and, and beneficial outcomes. We need to focus much less on the evaluative concerns and placing pressure on ourselves to do well and that if we make a mistake or an error or if we outright fail that um, we can still withstand that and kind of use it as a learning opportunity or experience rather than allowing it to dictate how you feel about yourself. I think Elise gave us the example of maybe this is just something they grow out of. All kids, once they get to adolescence, right, we talk about this in child clinical, that's a time of rebellion and independence, and so maybe perfectionism is not a construct that tends to define most kids as they enter adolescence. Maybe they even become less perfectionistic over time because they're feeling less pressure to be the perfect child, the perfect kid. The thing that's really special about Patty as a teacher is that she really, really cares about her students. And I know a lot of us do, but Patty goes above and beyond. I swear, Kate, I didn't set this up. <laughs> You're so funny. You're getting presents today. For all the support you've given me in the discussion oh, and everything. Oh, you are so sweet. So did you send everything off? Should, um, I, should I look? Should I? <gasps> Even though that she always has something going on, advisees, honors, her own research, she always finds a way to make time to be with her students and to hear their concerns. Patty would do anything to help her students get, get into her classes or succeed in her classes. The road to being or having a PhD in clinical, clinical psychology is long and I want to have a family and what am I going to do and how am I going to do this and should I do something differently? And, She's like, you know, people do this all the time. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know, if pe people do this all the time. She kind of embodies somebody that's doing it all right now, <laughs> and that's very inspiring. I'm married. Um, my husband and I have been married for 14 years now. He came here to Northampton with me when I got the job. Uh, here at Smith. Battle of Hastings. We have two lovely children. Jack's 10 and 1066. Emily is 7. We just got a new puppy. Um, Quincy is a black lab. It's now 11 weeks old. So outside of Smith, uh, mostly it's family time. Mommy, yes. do we have anything after school but except dinner? I mean, <laughs> yes. Today's a busy day. I mean, but except ballet. Ballet, soccer, ballet and soccer, and dinner. Seeing somebody who has been in my place finally and sitting in the classroom realizing that she truly understands what you're going through. I, I had such a hard time fitting in here that I really feel like my first year was just me scrambling um, to make up lost time. And Patty, you know, asked me, what do you mean? And I said, well, I'm first generation from my family at this college and it's extremely difficult. No one understands what I'm doing here or how I'm doing it or how difficult it is. And I was so comforted in knowing that 
Patty was also a first generation in her family. When I was a first year student, I went, oh my goodness, I shouldn't be here because I'm not getting A's on my papers, because I'm not even getting B's on my papers. My very first written assignment here at Smith College, I got a D minus. So I like to mention that I'm a Smith student and look, I wasn't the top student when I got here. I became a good student because of Smith College. When she left Smith, she went to graduate school. And when she came back, she was much more of a colleague. If anything, she was as much a mentor to me at that point as I was to her. When I came here 10 years ago, I was six months pregnant with my first son. She was also, she was six and a half months pregnant. We had our babies two weeks apart and became very good friends after that. She cares very deeply about teaching well and making sure students leave her classroom with some skills that they didn't have when they came in. She actually will test some of the things she does empirically. Because she does this so well, I can pick up my tips from her. I feel like I've landed in exactly the place that I, I was meant to be. I used to torture my younger sisters, all three of them, with um, playing school when we were growing up. What I live for, <laughs> why I do what I do, is for students to leave my class and be able to take what they've learned in some way and make it meaning, personally meaningful for them. Whether it's that it helps them to define a life path a little bit better, or it helps them to deal better with their own challenges, or to deal with a loved one or a friend who's having challenges. Any of those things, for me, are what get me really excited about being able to be in the classroom and, and to teach. Thank you.